What's up, beautiful people? Welcome to Voices in Power. Y'all made me big. Y'all made me feel a little bit bigger than I actually am. So thank you all. We're here for an amazing evening. And you all look beautiful. So clap it up for yourselves. Yeah, it's going to be a good night. So this is Voices in Power, our poetry open mic experience. We got some dope poets right over here. They're beautiful people. They have amazing artwork. They have a message to share, and they're excited to do it here with you. We're thankful that you're here to be a part of us. Let's make some noise, y'all, for DJ Aunt G. It's 2019. I'm hoping that it's a great one for all of us. And yeah, we're just excited to be here. Again, Voices in Power is all about family. I'm hoping that you are encouraged, that you are enlightened, inspired, and you have fun. We just want to have fun. Um, you are now part of the family. Welcome, cousins, aunties. Um, I'm excited because I got my actual family. I got my parents in the building. Yeah. My younger sister is in the building. And my older sister over here. For, for, for my younger sister, I was about to say little sister, but I got they, just all the tall jeans went to them. It's something different in the water after 90, 92. Something different was happening and people just grew much faster than they did. Um, I walked into high school, I was like four, eight when I went into high school. I was like a fourth grader, book bag huge. But that's just what we did. And that's why I started doing poetry and started talking really loud in front of a mic because it made me feel bigger and gave me more confidence. So we got some amazing artists. We about to get right into it. We're gonna bring up the first young lady that will be performing tonight. She is a beast. She is a friend of mine. She is a mother and a friend. So if we can give her a warm welcome. Let's clap it up, y'all, for Miss Poetic Soul. Miss Poetic Soul, and I like to provide nourishment for the mind and food for the soul with the purpose to encourage, empower, inspire, and teach through my poetry and spoken word. So the piece I'm going to be sharing is to shed light on mental health awareness, and it's titled State of Mind. She's lying. He's crying. Every day they're both fighting. A war against themselves, though it's just in their mind and thinking life would be fine if they just weren't alive and thinking that life would be fine if they just weren't alive and they've mastered the game of hiding, just wish someone would seek to find them. So find them, explore their mind and actively listen to how they feel. Comb through the I'm okays, the I'm fine, it's nothing and take the time to find out what is real. Because mental health and physical health are one and the same. However, society's social stigmas has taught us it's something we need to shame. Yet one in four people will experience a mental health problem in the duration of their lives. One in 10 children, it's already happening and aren't even mature enough to understand why. One in 12 of the whole population are affected by the mental illness of depression. And 450 million people globally have been diagnosed with a problem mentally. You see, most overlook its severity and can commonly joke about an individual's mental state. Completely ignorant to how the past two weeks they haven't ate. Or that cutting themselves is what keeps them up late. Stuttering is the root of their lack of communication, or rumination ruins all chances of friendships due to claimed exaggerations. Or that their gambling addiction led them to lose everything. Their spouse, their children, and even their wedding ring. 
or that their alcohol dependence cost them their freedom and independence. When they took the life of someone's child while driving under the influence, or that their inability to focus or their manic episodes would let them to isolate for you, for you to point at them and humiliate, leading their self-esteem to deteriorate to the point that they just want to leave this world and evacuate. Because mental health, mental health does not discriminate. The mental fight endured by many to open yourself up to such vulnerability. What will people say if I tell them I'm depressed, how I'm so lonely, empty, and how I feel worthless? What will people say if I tell them I'm, I have anxiety, where fear takes over completely and consumes me entirely? What will people say if I tell them I'm hearing voices, telling me what to do and have me making poor choices? What will people say if I tell them today? But how will they then treat me when they see me the next day? Those with mental health problems, often ostracized from society, separated from the majority. The mental affects the physical, they're both a part of the same body. So please, please reach out for help. Don't sit there and suffer silently. Because every single day, she's crying. And he's lying every day they're both fighting. A war against themselves, though, is just in their mind and thinking life will be fine if they just weren't alive and thinking that life will be fine if they just weren't alive and they've mastered the game of hiding, just wish someone would seek to find them. So find them. Explore their mind and actively listen to how they feel. Comb through the, I'm okay, I'm fine, it's nothing, and take the time to find out what is real. Because mental health and physical health are one and the same. Although society's social stigmas has taught us it's something we need to shame. So please, reach out to your family and friends. Let them know that you're still there. That you still care today while they're still here. Because there will be too many too willing to speak out about you. When they find out your mental illness has prematurely stolen you. When a simple call or text could have kept them alive. You have to catch them in stride. If you don't catch them, they'll die. Mental health is full body health. It's not just a state of mind. Thank you. One more time, y'all, for Miss Poetic Soul. I had the pleasure of meeting her son, Leon, right? Cool little guy. We are just chilling. He's being a kid, he's five, just running. Five years old, he like this big. I'm a grown man, and he about to catch me. But just so much energy and, and so creative. You can tell he's, he's following the footsteps his mother is paving, um, and it's such a beautiful thing. And we even jokingly, he was like, are you going to perform? And I was like, are you going to perform? And he was like, yeah. And he came up to share a piece talking about a little king, and I just thought it was so cool. Um, yeah, and it was just beautiful. So one more time, y'all, for Miss Poetic Soul. Y'all feeling good? Y'all still good? How many people got work tomorrow? Only you? Two? Three? Four? I'm sorry. Um, the rest of us get to enjoy the weekend. Did anybody set any um, New Year's resolutions? I didn't even know people really still did that. I feel like nobody makes it out of January. January is usually the longest month. I don't know if y'all remember last year, but it was like Jan. And then it was like February, March, April, June. And it just like the rest of the time just flew by. Um, but yeah, I just, somebody said something at the, at the last VIP we had. He was just like, I'm just looking to incrementally get better every single year. And that's all we just need to focus on. Just get a little bit better than the year before and you're doing all right. Um, so if you're ready for your next artist, let me hear you say, yeah. yeah. Make some noise for this handsome young brother, Chandler Touchstone. They gave me the mic. That was their first mistake. 
My name is Chandler Touchstone. I'm a poet from uh, Williamstown, New Jersey. We got Jersey in the building? Yes, clap it up for Jersey. Thank you. Thank you, Jersey. Better than Philly now. Uh, <laughs> so I wrote this piece. Uh, it's called uh, PTSD. Uh, I got diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder uh, about a year and a half ago. Um, and it can be kind of scary to get diagnosed with an acronym, uh, something so vague. And I wanted to understand it more, and I found that to kind of be made whole again, I had to redefine it uh, and to apply it to me, so. <laughs> this boy tries to be novel, unaware he is a novelty. Time turns these bones into fossils. Revolutionary dissolves into elementary. He's set inside his element, he settles at the sediment, made of smooth stones, this boy skipped on the Delaware that sinks such more slowly than his stomach. I fear the inevitable of irrelevancy, seeing I'm not a poet, just a tricky scumbag, dying, PTSD, prior thoughts scream deliberately, telling me the Delaware runs warmer than my veins, there's a chill down my spine, and a lash in my eye that's harder than the ones I give beating myself up. PTSD, playing to spiritual darkness, I wonder if the Delaware has beauty, not for its history, but for how much it really takes. PTSD, people try so desperately to wash their fears away. But this ain't the Jordan. You can't bathe seven times or seven times, seven times for this spot to dissipate. PTSD, please try to slam the door on your way out so something in this house shakes harder than me. But I'm tired of seeing my reflection in the reverberation of this old oak door, so that's why I sneak through the clean glass window at night to sleep. I never seem to settle in this riverbed. How can this boy's words hit when he can't seem to still the shaking hand that throws the ball? Maybe if he tags the broad side of a barn, his sentences will stick. He keeps going to the river to pray for what to say, but the current sweeps his words away before they even matter. They say silence is gold, but when you sift to the silt searching for it, the sound scares it away. But four letters, four ambiguous letters do not spell my end. Just because I'm not fresh doesn't mean I'm not alive. Just because I'm soft-hearted doesn't mean I don't impact. And just because I'm afraid doesn't mean I'm not brave. Perhaps these silly demands I make for myself are permutations of that single desire to love and to be loved. I'm not a fraud, a lexicon artist. I'm just a pretty thoughtful soul developing, persistently taking some demanding problems that some don't possess the strength to deal with on their own. Not so I shine, but so you do. PTSD, purposely trying to swim the Delaware to get to the side where you are. Thank you. That boy, nice. <laughs> One more time, y'all, for Chandler. There's, a, there's like three things that I want to talk about that he shared. Um, he mentioned Williamstown, New Jersey. Yay. Um, is Philly in the building? <laughs> we got anywhere else? I know we got nothing. No New York, no Delaware. Whatever, we in Philly anyway. But shout out to the few um, Jersey folk. Y'all can't drive and y'all water tastes funny. Um, that is the greatest thing Jersey has. I would never get gas in Philly. I did, but I was born and raised in this beautiful city of brotherly love. Philadelphia, and I wrap my city till I die. And shout out to Philly Cam. It's not Jersey Cam, y'all. It's Philly Cam. Just kidding. I don't want no beef. I want no beef. I want no beef. Um, that was one. Two. Um, I always wanted to like write a poem with like wordplay, 
with just like breaking down. When he said in the beginning, even before the poetry started, he was kicking poetry. When he said um, that he wouldn't allow four letters to like define him and like to end him, that's like that alone was something to like kind of chew on. Um, he's such a beast, such an amazing guy. One of my favorite things about Chandler, though, beyond the artistry, um, is his heart to serve. Um, the first time I met Chandler, he he came to an open mic that we had, and it was early. I was still pulling stuff out of the car, and he came right up, and I, he was just like, hey, how can I help? And he spent the next 40 minutes just lining up chairs, and we didn't even have a sound guy at that, that venue, and he went up and he did sound, and he just jumped right into serving, um, and it was just like something where I was like, man, he'll forever um, be close and be a friend. Um, yeah, so one more time, y'all, for Chandler. And I love Jersey, just to make that clear. My parents live there, my sister lives there. I don't really like the part that I don't know I was from, but whatever. Um, this next young lady is a beast. Um, tiny, yet powerful and big. Um, captivated the first moment um, that I heard her speak. Um, so gentle, but again, um, fierce. So I'm excited. So if you're ready for your next artist, let me hear you say, yeah. yeah. Make some noise, y'all, for Pauline. Hi, guys. I'm Pauline. Um, I just want to say I'm really nervous because I'm not good at, like, speaking in front of, like, groups of people. But um, my New Year's resolution is to do more open mics, you know, and like try to really step out of my comfort zone. So this poem that I'm doing, um, I've, I've revisited it the past couple of months. Um, and like, because I wanted to say something uh, about my current state of mind, but also something that I've been struggling with uh, for like years now. So uh, it's untitled, but yeah, All right, I'm going to get into it now. In my poetry class last year, my professor criticized our poems by asking what we were hiding. He taught us that each line was a story unfolding on its own, and sometimes we needed to turn the pages by highlighting every significant thought. I hadn't written in months, and last night I tried to write a poem about myself and realized maybe I didn't know me as well as I thought I did. I couldn't even remember my voice, how I used to write. See, when you go so long without speaking, your own sense of identification fails you. So I asked myself, what am I hiding? And when I couldn't find the words, I thought for a second that if there was anything in this world that knew me better than I thought I did, then that would be the internet. So I spent the following morning researching, trying to find a diagnosis for the heaviness in my chest. At first, I blamed a depression, but I never hid that part of me. And anxiety was almost like an excuse thrown out of reflex. I sought out definitions for words I couldn't even pronounce, hoping that there was an outline for what I'd caved my body into. I stretched the flesh on me on screen in hopes that I could image search my, my trauma in hopes that I could image search my... Uh, in hopes I could image search myself and find a forum for all the trauma that I experienced boiled down to one single word, a diagnosis I could title a poem to explore everything I didn't know how to explain. And then I found it. Phagophobia, noun, one, the fear of swallowing or eating or of being eaten. Two, the uncomfortable lump swelling in the back of your throat as you stand in the middle of a crowded room realizing that everyone, yet simultaneously no one is looking at you. Three, the reason I can't stop writing about all the people who broke me. I've never been good at washing things down my throat without addressing them. The uncertainty stays and before long becomes a crippling anxiety in my chest, sneaking down to my stomach and finding itself perched against my gut like an anchor holding on to a deserted ship. It never leaves me. It's a haunting I want to escape, so I Buddha triangle my memories and hope that when I stop thinking about my exes that people will stop asking me about them, but I don't know how not to be one of those people. I don't know how to stop looking for them in the spaces beside me. See, there's a difference between actively, search, actively th thinking and subconsciously searching. And often, I find myself doing the latter like I lost some part of me when they left. I, I don't know how not to be lost. 
I walked into the wilderness thinking the adventure comes from poorly made decisions and positive mindset. I brought nothing but 20 seconds of courage and shaky hands and found that the world wasn't all sugar and spice. I learned that the worst violence happens right under the sun, and by that, I mean, I've heard bone meet pavement in a quick second. I've seen bullet words settle the pop of a limb in a blink. I learned that it's always people doing the hurting. So when I stand in a crowded room, I always feel like I'm being swallowed into a sin, like, like a greed that destroys you. And by that, I mean, my family and I used to be close. Close enough that shared laughter was a common occurrence. Lately, I find it hard to remember the days where silence wasn't a peace treaty where it didn't stand as the only language where we weren't at war with each other. What I mean is, my father named me after him. And I grew up hoping to be twice the person he couldn't be. But these days, I find his anger popping in between each breath of mine, and I'm afraid I'm becoming more of him than I am of myself, and I don't know how to write him out of me. What I mean is, no, the truth is, my father was the first poem I ever tried to understand. And I grew up searching for answers in hands that gripped like his. But when that didn't work, I tried to find healing in poetry. I pricked myself with pens and bled into unfinished journals, thinking if I could find him in my blood, then I could find forgiveness in both of us. See, I've been writing about him for three years now. But the hollow still hasn't left. And truthfully, I don't know what this poem is about. I don't know if it's about me or my father or the men that came after him. I don't know if it's about God, about forgiveness or resentment, acceptance or denial. Am I still hiding or am I facing it? I don't know. I don't know. I'm telling y'all, little people write the best poetry. One more time, y'all, for Pauline. Sheesh. Were y'all listening? That's like, that's a piece that you gotta like over and over to really digest um, and comprehend the fullness of it. Um, these, this was just the first three performers, y'all. Clap it up for the first three. <laughs> Such an amazing young individual, so talented. Um, again, and I'm, I'm just biased to smaller people doing big things. Um, so Pauline is, is one of my favorite that I keep in the tuck. Um, right now, we're going to have the DJ play a little bit of music, right, to get us live. And um, I'm going to need three victim volunteers um, to come up. And we're going to do it like this. So it'll be this side, right, versus this side. Real simple. So, like, y'all not friends right now. So y'all can stare to the other side and mean mug the person in the, the other side of the row. Um, no smiles, y'all. No smiles. We're serious about this. Just kidding. So um, I need three volunteers from this side and then three volunteers from this side and we're gonna get into this quick little um, competition. So we got volunteers, we got volunteers. We can take those three, one, two, three, um, come up. And then um, yeah, we're gonna talk about how we about to do this. Y'all could just line up, just one person and then the next person and then the next person. Y'all could do the same on this side. Um, we're gonna have a little bit of fun, right? So y'all can step up, so the first two, This is how we're going to do it. So usually we play a game of cheerleader. And what cheerleader is, is a game of rock, paper, scissors, shoot, right? Everybody knows how to play that? I always ask, and it's the one person that tries to do it with no foundation, and they just like, and throw it down here, or, or just do something janky, but it's rock, paper, scissors, and you throw your choice of weapon. Um, and then that's how we're going to do it. So it's the best out of three, right? If y'all can line up right here, it's the best out of three. What's going to happen is y'all two face. If 
this young lady beats this young lady, then you take a seat, the next person comes up, and then we'll do it like that. The best out of three until there's only one team, until one team is completely seated. And then we'll unveil the prize. Um, so the DJ, you can drop something, and then y'all can face each other, and y'all gonna go in. And then remember, this is your team, and this is, and this is your team. Y'all got less. So, so poets, poets, we rocking with this team right here. We need it. We need it. We need it. Hey. Ah, right, simmer down. Um, so y'all can step up. The DJ gonna drop something. Y'all can step up and go in. Cheer, cheer, cheer! Yes. Uh, we got wait, one wait, right wait, here. Wait, hey, keep going. Hey, get up! Uh, get up! Let's uh. go! Let's 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 We won y'all, sorry. I feel like it was a lot of y'all that said Jersey. Um, maybe that's why. All right, all right, all right, all right. You cut that, cut that, remove that out. Um, yeah, so we about to get back into the performance. We just wanted to have a little fun. We may do something again a little bit later and need a few more volunteers. Um, right now, the next person is me, um, according to the seat order. So I'm about to spit this piece. It's called City Sights and it's from the perspective of Philadelphia. Um, yeah, I did a tour and it was geared towards, um, it was called Gravity and it was getting real about violence in today's youth. And it was a music tour. I was the only poet so I would open with this piece. Um, and because it's about Philly, yeah, I just love it. So here we go. I woke up to the scent of death. Gunshots played his role as my alarm clock, and at the foot of my bed is every corner covered in crime displayed on your evening news. You are lost and confused if you believe your brothers and sisters cannot already picture the scripture scripted on figures. Scribbled on figures of speech delivered by lips to teach the seats by your church pastor. You walk on my doormat with the words home sweet home embedded on your tongue and kiss me with your lies soon after. You pass a disaster. You hear my cry for help, but your response, your response is no answer. You whisper, you love me but you do not factor the fractures my vocal cords capture as I attempt to scream, but your miseducated eyes feel laughter. It seems the scene seen between ages 12 and 19 are visual blueprints and routines to create America's future killing machines. Yeah. Call of Duty, Philadelphia warfare, yet this is no game. You do not die and respawn five seconds later, no one will remember your name. You are all seen the same, John Doe, Tag number 004-62-1197. Mothers and fathers' tears falling in reverse, shooting up at God's heavens. Now he dodges bullets like we dodge raindrops. So why are we the ones covered in blood and why is he praying the rain stops? I guess that explains a lot. Our brain's job contains problems of having problems on how to solve them. Tissues upon tissues, now we miss you to continues, so let's involve them. Call them whatever you like. Despite their actions, our youth are not the ones to blame. 
continuing to point your fingers at the schools, communities, and churches, but I beg of you to reconsider and reevaluate your aim. Because while you're pointing one at them, three are pointing back at you, so who is really killing who they should have became? See, what happens is we cause damages by creating savages to each other's havoc. This is a basic concept. Don't just grab it. Grasp it, then change your foolishness and ignorant habits. I am angry to witness our children suffer. I am no sister, no brother, no father, no mother, no businessman, no hustle, no shape, no color, no figure, no number. I am merely your city smothered by what we are all scared to discover the power and the voices of each other. So I challenge you all, put down your guns and open your mouths. Let us transition our bullets into words and show me that your city isn't burning without reason and that our cry for help is actually being heard. I actually find it sort of absurd that your vision continues to remain blurred and that it hasn't occurred. Your city streets, my chest, bear as coffins to your victimized children, multiply by the millions. You live like monsters. Yet walk down the street like you're peaceful civilians. I just don't understand you humans. Now you say you love your city, but tell me how has that been proven? Let's paint the city red has really left me in confusion because I didn't think the movement was blood. Or am I being naive and stupid? You kill babies, murder kids, slay adults, and send all their dead souls to my living room to rest in peace. Go ahead and continue to test these streets, and I'll continue to digest these eats. But don't come looking for me requesting receipts because death has no return policy. And in all honesty, the psychology behind such hypocrisy is seen in my eyes as pure comedy. But to the victims of all you victims, I send you my deepest condolences and my sincerest apologies. I thought I was about to dance, but I almost tripped because I ain't got no rhythm. Um, thank you all so much. It's always weird when, like, I go to introduce myself and then, like, got to talk about myself afterwards because I'm the host. Um, so we're going to just scurry on along. Um, thank you all. Um, so in this moment, we could just clap it up for y'all. Just clap it up for y'all. Y'all having a good time? Hey, 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 hey. So we about to get... Right into the next artist, right? So if you're ready for your next artist, let me hear you say, yeah. yeah. Again, shout out to the Little Poets with big voices and powerful messages and everything like that. Super talented young individual. Again, soft-spoken, but please don't miss the message um, and what she's about to share. So we can give her a warm welcome and clap it up, y'all, for Tuba. On September 11, 2001, mainstream media outlets started a war of terror that destroyed the lives of millions of Muslim Americans. This poem is, our for, is for our homeboy in the White House. This poem is called Mrs. Media. Good afternoon, this is your current president, Donald Trump, and today we're going to be talking about the biggest threat to America, Islam and Muslims. They're the biggest threat because they believe in jihad, which means killing Americans in the name of Allah. You want to know the meaning? I just gave you the meat, meat, media is defined as the main means of mass communication media, is defined as the main means of Ma Ma Malcolm X once said, that the media is the most powerful entity on earth. It has the power to make the innocent look guilty and the guilty look innocent, and that's power because it controls the minds of the masses media, controls the minds of the masses media, controlled by six corporations, hundreds of channels, and thousands of stations, controlled by only six corporations who for generation upon generation have mutilated our people with microphones and have slaughtered them with scripted scripts under scorching spotlights in which my right to an identity was stripped. 
Because sometimes in the haziness of an ambiguous, unannounced war on identity, in the midst of verbal strikes and offensive drones pointed at defenseless Muslim homes in which a human being's identity is treated as if it were a war toy, sometimes I tend to lose myself in the noise, and sometimes this hijab feels like a noose around my neck, not because I am oppressed, but because of the hundreds of news anchors clawing at my dress. Tell them I do not need their saving. Tell them that there there is no glory in winning a one-sided war. Tell them that my prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him's backbone, was stronger than each and every one of their verbal drones. Tell them that you can never extinguish truth. Because despite the immensity of dark matter that surrounds it, it will always shine like a billion suns. And while you're at it, tell President Trump that it is pronounced Islam. And I am a Muslim and that jihad is a struggle in the way of our Lord. And the only violence involved is against one's own demons. And while you're at it, tell President Trump that the same children he wants to save from Islam are the ones that he intends to leave in third world alleys bleeding. Tell him they do not need his saving. Tell him we do not need his saving. Tell him I do not need his saving because my speech is my set and my demeanor is my desk. My pen is my sword, the Lord my camera and the world my audience. Tell him I do not need his saving because I am my own me me media. Thank you. Keep telling y'all about them little poets. One more time for y'all for Tuba. <laughs> and a lot of the artists are college students. Shout out to the college students doing amazing things in their artistry and just, yeah, just doing it. Clap it up, y'all. Clap it up. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So right now, we're about to get into another artist, um, a friend of mine, um, a member of the Voices in Power team, um, and all that good stuff like that. I, I, I kind of want to say something that he don't want me to say, but I'm not, because he looked at me kind of funny, and my car is parked in this little corner over here, and it's kind of dark. So we're going to move along. But if you're ready for your next artist, let me hear you say, yeah. Yeah. Make some noise, y'all, for Breezy the Thing over there, almost, almost went down right there. How y'all doing? Okay, okay. Real quick before I say anything, I just want to say shout out to DJ and G doing his thing. Every show, every show, I see people come up. I see amazing artists. I see people come up singing. I'm waiting for River Dancer to come because I know what's gonna happen. And Aunt G just over there, just shh, 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 like. He has to be on stage the whole time. Like, he only gets off real quick when it's like they're in the thick of their poem, but then he has to come right back and do the thing. <laughs> so, every, so every time I get on stage, I just, I always want to just like shout out DJ Angie because he's just so dope. And shout out these artists over here. They doing their thing, they doing their thing. I gotta follow them. I wish now and I wish I had one first because you know, they're pretty dope, they're pretty dope. So um now into my poem. Um it's called On Those Days, and this poem is uh basically about when you're going through an issue, when 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 there's a crisis in your life, it's the worst that it could be. It's the worst thing that could ever happen. Because currently, right now, you're still going through it. You don't see that there's a rainbow at the end. You don't see that this will get better. This too shall pass. And uh, I wrote this poem really deep into that, into being depressed, into not having a job at the time or not having, whatever I was going through at the time, I kind of just channeled it into this poem because, and that's the beautiful thing about poetry, right? That's the beautiful thing about poetry because that, that gives us the outlet to be our own therapist, be our own friend, be our own, write whatever we need. But enough talking, I'm getting to my poem. All right. Approximately 125,600 people die every day. 
In this country, every 98 seconds, a person is sexually assaulted. To not understand the cruel world that we live in is to fall victim to it. To not believe that you will ever fall is to condemn yourself to a life of failing to get up because there will be days. There will be days that the intensity of the sun's rays will be directly intertwined with the darkness that you feel inside. It's just something about the daytime. Maybe it's the hustle and bustle in the air that makes you realize that your future is just a little bit farther and a little bit darker than everyone else's. There will be times that you greet the AM cloaked in your blankets on my knees to chest because fetal is the only position that you feel qualified for. Everyone around you seems so fortunate because you've hoarded all of your sorry to yourself, but it's important that you remind yourself. This is not your reality. This it's just the worst days, but it's hard to look at the bright side when your worst days feel like the worst of days without others. Other beautiful days where the sun actually splashes through my window to kiss my face. On those days, life is a blessing and the day is a yes box checked on a note handed to God. Do you like me? Check yes. And no need to return this because I already know. And I keep my proof neatly folded in my back pocket. My smile is a washable tattoo. Yes, I know it will rain, but today the weather channel says that the Forecasters keep shining, brother. So all my friends, rock your Ray-Bans to protect your eyes from the shine that we shine together. Because on these wonderful days, chicken tastes just a bit more finger licking. The radio DJ is playing no games today. I get only a few red lights and everyone in the world seems to have learned how to drive overnight. And I dream that I never have to go to sleep again because I don't want to miss out on all of this life. It is far easier than you think to choose to not be happy. Because bills still need to be paid, so your body still needs to be slaved. So you work at a dead-end job for people who will never love you and the people who are supposed to never correctly learn how to. So you often find yourself alone in a home that you know you'll never own. And though you don't have much, it can all be taken away with just a single bad day. And it's far more difficult than you think to choose to be happy. That's why on these wonderful days, I am grateful to wake up and just smile. Just be thankful. Just to rejoice for all of life's simple joys like like beaches. Like 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 poetry. Like like every single thing that comes out of Victoria's Secret. So on these wonderful days, I don't need to be reminded of all the soldiers we lost yesterday or that tomorrow the war will resume because today I've won the battle. Everyone I love will get to see the sunrise. I am still here, able to and have the ability to fight, to work, to love, to earn a future with far less yesterdays and many more tomorrows like today. But for right now, I am happy to just be here, be alive, to enjoy life and all of its simplicity. Thank you. I'm Beezy the Poet. One more time, y'all, for Darnell Butler. <laughs> he, he doesn't like when I say his real name. And I gave him a middle name and it's Ernest. So if you want to, what's your middle name? Ah, it's Ernest. It's Ernest today. Today it is Ernest. One more time for that young man, Beezy the Poet. One of, one of, first of all, I just want, I just need that poem, like, as my alarm clock. So it could just wake me up like, today, today, keep on shining, brother. So I could just get up and, and be good before I, I get my coffee in my system or whatever. Um, but moreover, I met him a couple years ago and he's just been a friend from the rip. Um, before he's a poet, before he's involved in, in creating and curating these experiences, he's just been a good dude and I've seen him grow so immensely in the past couple years. And I'm excited to continue to do life with this man and continue to see him grow and, and mature and, and get better and better every day like we all try to be. So one more time y'all for BZ Darnell Butler, the poet. Well, if y'all see us scrapping outside in the corner, just leave us. Just leave us. If I'm winning, record it. And then be like, world star? But if I'm not, don't. Um, so if you ready for your next artist, let me hear you say, yeah. yeah. You already know you're about to get the business because you got on a suit. So just, 
prepare yourself for this amazing, talented, young man. Maybe young, I don't know how you're you young today. Um, since the moment he came into, into Voices in Power, um, he's been family. We've adopted him in. Um, yeah, so please welcome him warmly. Let's clap it up, y'all, for X, the wordsmith. How's everybody doing? All right, my name is X, the wordsmith. I have a lot that I have to say and not a lot of time in which to say it, so I'm gonna get right into it. Listen, <laughs> my name is X, and I'm back from the grave, back from the valley, I was trapped in my ways. Yeah, I'm a sinner, but I'm wrapped in his grace. And yeah, I was lost, but I'm back on the page. So what's up? How is it that every time I look up, somebody's got a problem that probably involves Trump? Congrats on the Super Bowl, but you can't come to the White House because you don't respect the anthem. Hypocrites, always talking, never listening. More concerned with that flag than the citizens. Revolution's imminent because the country that you want to celebrate is not the same for everybody living in it. Wait a minute before you try to tell me to get out. Got to keep in mind that this is also my house. I pay the rent too, so don't just cut the lights out. It's time for a house meeting. It's been a while now. Pipe down. I love living in the U.S. Just because it's great doesn't mean that there's no mess. So every now and then, you're going to see somebody protest. And it's not the end of the world. We just need to address something that's going on that isn't fair. Like people being shot by the cops for guns that were never there. Meanwhile, when an active shooter gets stopped, somehow that man's arrested, not shot. You see, there's a little bit of a disparity if you compare the treatment of people living in the land of the free. And I'm not going to just blame the regime. They're just a bunch of human beings being how humans be. At the same time, we've got the other extreme where people believe we can't live together in peace. Now they're the beast that everybody said they would be, just waiting for the day that we could really be free and waiting to see an apology that's probably not coming. So I think it's time for all of us to stop fronting. Our community is broken and we know who did it, but that doesn't matter now. It's up to you to fix it. So blame the system. Blame the government. Blame religion. Blame Karen's potato salad with raisins in it. Blame... <laughs> <laughs> so blame the system, blame the government, blame religion, blame Karen's potato salad with raisins in it, blame any and everybody who's trying to fit in and call it cultural appropriation and blame them again. Now wait a second, before you call me an Uncle Tom, gotta keep in mind that this is also my problem and I want to solve it, but we all must see we're just a bunch of human beings being how humans be. So me, I'm staying out of this heat. I don't need it. Everybody's looking for beef, I'm going vegan. Jesus showed the people how to turn the other cheek and it would seem as though that lesson was forgotten. So I'll teach it. Professor X, <laughs> classic, trying to get up in your head like I'm telepathic. See, changing minds is not a simple task, but if we manage it, we'll bring them together like magnets. <laughs> yeah, God's plan. See, I've been praying hard and reaching for God's hand, looking for the signs and hearing what God's saying. So let me break it down because God is not playing. Look, love your neighbors as yourself. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and James, they all tell us to love God first and love each other. So no matter where you're from, guess what? We're all brothers. And I realize that I'm trained to hate people by the same hand that trained them to hate me. If I keep fighting the guy that I can see, everybody just dies. There won't be peace. The real enemy is just hiding in the shadows, instigating the fight, then watching as we battle each other wherever we're different from one another. Religion, political party, skin color. I've been under the impression that we could hover above all of these issues, and this is what I've discovered. We're all broken people and may never recover if we don't stop being haters instead of lovers. Love, as special, more than just a word. So take its true meaning, use it as a verb. It's an action, it's packed with emotion and compassion. When people love each other, everybody is impacted. It's sad though, watching the way that people are acting. Love has been replaced with selfishness and it's tragic. If you're asking, I'm telling you, it's a tactic. Our enemy is killing us with simple mathematics, think. We have our factions that keep us distracted. The word denomination is taken from fractions. Our enemy is trying to divide us when he's attacking. When we're separated, division becomes subtraction. Divide and conquer, the strategy is classic. It's way too many de denominations active, but if we could put God's love into practice, division of the people will no longer be a factor. Wordsmith.
One more time, y'all, for X the Word Smith. What was that woman's name? Karen? I can't stand Karen. Listen, I ain't never experienced that though. So thank the Lord for saving me from that. Um, I ain't never heard of that. Who does that? And sorry to anyone here that does that. It might feel really awkward for you, but nobody knows that you do it. So just keep it to yourself. I'm real particular about my potato salad. There's only like three people. Like when I see the potato salad, the family did. If you don't do this, if you don't go to a family function and you don't ask who made what dishes, you don't really got good taste buds. You don't really, if you just eating whatever's there and you don't like, Aunt, Paul, Aunt Pauline made this? Oh, no, nah, we got to stay away from that. If you don't do that, you don't, I'm questioning everything like, who made the toast? Who made this toast? Because some people just can't even do that. One more time for that gentleman. So y'all good? We feeling good, right? So just real quick, one more time for the artist. One more time for the artist. So right now, we got a special treat. I'm going to pull up someone else, um, a friend of mine. I met him years ago, and he's just always been a good friend. Um, above and all else. If, if you don't know a lot, like, I love relationships. I love friendship um, more than all the extra stuff that comes with life and we can get kind of consumed by and what they can do for me and how they help me and stuff. At, at the bottom line of it all, I just want friendship. I just want good people. Um, and if you're not good people, we're going to figure it out together. Um, we're going to work it out. And this guy is a good guy. Um, and I'm happy to call him my friend. And I'm happy to introduce him to you all. So if you are ready for your next artist, let me hear you say, yeah. yeah. Make some noise, y'all, for Scott Smith. It's a little short. It's a little short here, Lewis. <laughs> nah, this is awesome. How's everybody doing? You guys doing good? Good stuff. Um, can we just give it up for the host, the man of the hour, Lewis Marrero? Um, Voices in Power has been something that's kind of, I've been around it, I guess, about six years now. And uh, it's just a blessing to see how many people come through those doors and get impacted by people just being honest about where they're coming from, what they're going through. And uh, it's just inspiration. Um, if you're an artist, a creative in the area, you have to go to a show. You have to get to one and check it out. And I guarantee you, you're gonna wanna come back the next month and the next month and the next month um, just because of the way that they love each other and love the community. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. So thank you for this opportunity. X, I love you. All day bars, my man. <laughs> Um, I'm going to do a uh, wordplay piece, the second time I've ever performed this. I uh, just wrote it recently, uh, did it at an event that uh, somebody else in the audience put together. And uh, it's uh, wordplay based and uh, it's called Inner State of Mind. <laughs> Misery loves company. Allies banded up, if I'm in the mix, I go off. Moments on camera. Oh, I know, Kodak, coded in states of confusion, still reeling from the effects of what feels like a hangover, montage on rerun, never ending, always new. Jersey, jewelry, and shoes were tight, but why do I feel like I'm stuck up on a mountain in a tree? So high up, why Yao Ming couldn't pull me down? I want to be free, don't you? Talk is cheap, but this pen stills. Vain, yeah, that's the proper identification. These brass cannot hold me down. Wordplay, I'm top 10. I see you're still confused, but stay with me. It's a course of consonants and constant conference. I read the text as the pastor was preaching about John 4, but I missed the sip of living water that was being poured. It was drowned out by knockoff Minnesotas and blunts. I reached out and picked it from the corner store. I leaned to listen, but my ears missed again because my heart lacked conviction. The start and finish of my condition, but God, the the cosmic machine of washing, son of the master who chooses us in spite of our hearts, hurts, missteps, and miscarries.
days. He could have came as the champ, sure, but he was born to a virgin in a cave. Her name was Mary. Land was Bethlehem and the anthem of angels under a canvas of stars, born there to fulfill prophecy. See, even Noah built the ark and saw the rain rising, but really nobody saw this sun rising. How? Why? He grew up like a tall oak, the home of outcasts and degenerates became a Nazarene, like Luis and a Clark, sojourners with culture, as an outsider on purpose, settled for sheep, traded gold bricks to separate wheat from weeds. But when he needed them the most, his core was gone. Carpenter humbled himself to work with wood he would later die on to keep the main thing, the main thing I'll ask. Can you finally read between these lines? This air is zone of heavenly revelation. Blind faith, road eyelids shut, that's a Paul's emancipation. Red blood color of radically loved, he connects us to cut us from our care for lying, bridges the gap of George's curiosity, conduct a feat of scrutiny from even Pilate's palace. But he willingly was crucified to give his life. He's the model of awareness, self-identified, but God did glorify to make us understand this conundrum. Nations can be changed through the story if you knew yours. Can you understand? It'll hit you like an L if you can hear the full tour. I owe a lot to this gift giver whose grace leads me to the floor. I know he saved me from being filled with noise. Words misdirected, what exactly? I don't know, but you'll see anything other than a man ablaze. And it's amazing how faith wishes can sunship a man wasting away at sea and make his heart redirect to be in a state of free. That's 50. Don't believe me for king and country, I'll run it back. I said, Missouri loves company, Alabama it up if I'm in the Mexico off. Moments on camera, Ohio, co-decoded in states of confusion, still reeling from the effects of what feels like a hangover, Vermont, all genre rerun, never end Nevada, and always New Jersey jewelry and shoes were tight. But why do I feel like I'm stuck up on a Montana tree? So high up, Wyoming couldn't pull me down. I want to be free, don't you talk? It's cheap, but this Pennsylvania, that's the proper identification in Nebraska, not hold me down. Wordplay, I'm top. Tennessee, you're still confused, but stay with me. It's a course of consonants and constant conference. I read the Texas, the pastor was preaching about John 4, but a Mississippi water that was being poured, it was drowned out by knockoff Minnesotas and blunts. I reached out and picked it from the corner store. I leaned to listen, but my ears Michigan because my heart lacked conviction. The start and finish of my condition, but God, the cosmic machine of Washington, of the Massachusetts and spite of our hearts hurts missteps and miscarries he could have came as the camp sure but was born to a Virginia cave her name was Maryland was Bethlehem Indiana of angels under a Kansas of stars born that if a full prophecy see even know but the Arkansas the rain rising but really nobody saw this sun rising Hawaii grew up like a tall Oklahoma of outcasts and degenerates became a Nazarene like Louisiana Clark sojourners with culture as an outsider on purpose settled for sheep trade to go bricks to separate wheat from weeds, but when he needed them the most, his aura gone, humbled himself, carpenter humbled himself to work with what he would later die on, to, to keep the main thing, the main thing, Alaska, you finally read between these lines, this Arizona, heavenly revelation, blind faith, Rhode Island shut, island shut, that's a Paul's emancipation, red blood, Colorado, Cali love, he cannot cuts us from our Carolina, bridges the gap of Georgia's curiosity, Kentucky of scrutiny from even Pilate's palace. But he willingly was crucified to give his life. He's the model awareness, self-identified, but God did glorify to make us understand this conundrum. Nations can be changed through this story. If you New York and you understand, it'll hit you like an L if you can hear the full tour. Iowa, lot to this gift giver whose grace leads me to the Florida. I know he saved me from being fil- Illinois. Words misdirected, what exactly? I don't know, but you'll see. I don't hope, but you'll see anything other than a man ablaze. And it's amazing how faith, Wisconsin, ship a man wasting away at see and make his heart redirect to be in a state of free that's 50. Thank you Scott. Thank you all for coming to Voices in Power. We are so grateful to have you. That man right there. So if we can clap it up for yourselves, clap it up for the artists, clap it up for DJ Aunt G. Thank you all so much. Y'all always welcome at Voices in Power. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much.